A big ruck last night. I had a huge big ruck last night. That's why I'm not going out tonight. I had a big ruck. I went out, right? A big crowd of us went out. Me, uh, Antonio Bandana, right? <laughs> Who invented the thing you put around the head and then done film with Avita, with Madonna, right? He was there. Uh, Keanu Reeves there, but I was with the Spice Girls, right? The Spice Girls were there. And I've said to him, I've had a couple of snowballs, because I'm a big snowball man when I get going. And I've said to a Jerry, I've gone, here, Jerry, right? You, you can't even spell your name. Ha, ha, ha. I said, it's J. You spell Jerry with a J, right? She says, no, you, you, it's spelt, it's pronounced with a J, but it's spelt with a G. Right? And I had a big guy and said, you can't spell your name, right? And then she kicked me in the Julie's. Right? So, 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 right, I'll the name. I'll tell you, um, oh, it's lovely. Hmm, isn't that beautiful? Ever do that? When you comb your hair like that, right? And then start, and then you just pick the bits out of it. Mm. You can eat them, or you can spread them on your toaster. You never eat... Well, I'll tell you what I've done. I've marketed it. Look, where is it? I've got some in here. Here, look. That beautiful, look. Original home extract honey. Look at that. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Mmm, tasty. All the, every now and again you get a bit of a louse, but you just spread it out. And, oh, look, that shouldn't be in here. That shouldn't be in here, that. Oh, I better put that somewhere safe. I'll put that, I'll put that somewhere where an old person or a child can't, because that's a lethal weapon, that is. Oh, it's deadly, that is. If you're trained how to use them, I'll put it, I'll put it behind there so no one can get it. And, uh, oh, this is good stuff. I'll show you this. It's really good. Uh, what it is, right, say you're, say you're walking along, right? Maybe you've got a glass table, quite stupidly, and you walk into it. Ah, oh, like that. Or you're playing football. Maybe you get a phone call from a leading premiership manager that says, I'm like, up, up front, and you're have, going to have a run out for them, like, in a big FA Cup fixture, and you get a bang on your knee, right? This is the stuff for that, look. Look at that. Bump control. <laughs> Put it on, bump's gone. It's fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. I discovered a new thing, a fantastic new thing I can do with my magic microwave, right? You know the microwave is fantastic. It's a mixture of Swiss and Japanese technology, right? <laughs> it's what you do, right? You get, first thing you get that, right? You see that? That's a picture of Kate Moss. Very, very good friend of mine. I don't want to go into details, but you know and I know the score, right? And uh, that's, a, that's a dromedary, right? Very, very good friend of mine. Don't want to go into details, but you know and I know the score. <laughs> right, what you do is you get that, you get the cake moth and you get the dromedary and you put them in the microwave and you put in the secret code, 222-444-139993-1119. Press start, wait. Boop, 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 ding. There you go. So, cake moth, dromedary, and you get a very nice packet of uh, camel lights. <laughs> I don't spark them, obviously, because I'm a health freak. I treat my body like a temple. My body is a temple. Seriously, you've got to take your shoes off before you can get inside it. <laughs> I say, oh, here's my new program they're bringing back. I see on all them Sky uh, channels that run all the old pros. I'm back there when I used to be in that with, look, Sapphire and Steel, look. <laughs> that was me, I was Steel. We used to have adventures. Me and the bird who got very old all of a sudden and quite haggard. <laughs> that was the one I was And, uh, oh, here's another book I got, right? Delegating Authority. And it says, how to handle... This is a book, right? If you read this, this will teach you how to be successful in business. Delegating Authority. And I thought, I'll read this. And then I thought, now nah, I'll get someone else to do it. <laughs> now, as it happens, you're very lucky to find me in uh, this time of day. Because, obviously, this time of night, normally, I would be uh, out and about. Right, here, have a look. I don't disturb him because he's busy. It's my cousin Carl down there. He's, an imp uh, he's a ventriloquist. And he comes down here by the river to practice. That's his doll, Betty. Right, he's just going through his act, a few like that. Got the gear, got the gear. Oh, I don't want to read. Oh, you pulled my head off. He's very, very good, it's very good. You might see him at one of the leading clubs in the cabaret circuit. <laughs> there we go. Right, I'll tell you what I've got for you now. What have I got? Oh, um, I'm a bit worried about that bread bread roll. I'll leave it there, but I must move it before my Welsh lady cleaner, because if she mishandles it, she could do herself serious injury. Uh, oh, it's a program I made, right? Here's a program I made uh, a couple of years ago now about taxi touts. People who go to the mainline stations and they say, uh, you want a taxi? You want a taxi? But don't ever go in them, right? Because you're supposed to go in the proper taxis. These are unlicensed, right? Uh, so what I've done, I've sent out an undercover reporter. I posed as a travel-weary foreigner who had just arrived off the Gatwick Express. Within minutes, I was approached by a tow. Just, just incidentally, right, it's a very, very talented reporter, this man I've sent out. What nationality is he? Quite obviously, Scottish. 
I posed as a travel with a reporter. He's Scottish. He's, he's, he is Scottish. He's genuinely Scottish, right? But uh, not not when he's undercover, he's not. He becomes the most pathetic South African you've ever heard. Yeah, I'm, uh, I want to go to this address. Oh, you can just feel the wind coming across the belt, can't you? I want to go to this address. <laughs> no, it's a very serious program. Uh, SD1? Yeah, take it straight away. Thank you. My destination was Waterloo. The two-mile trip cost three pounds in a black cab. Three pounds? How much would this driver charge? All right, and what do you think? Three pounds in a black cab, he's on a... I think he's going to overcharge him. I think he could go up to double. I think he could go six, and he obviously, because he's obviously fully convinced that he's from South Africa. <laughs> He could knock it out. He could charge him seven or eight pounds, and this is what we were after. So that, that's the question. How much was he going to charge? How much is that? Thirty-five pounds. Thirty-five pounds. Thirty-five pounds. Thirty-five pounds. But you, you only picked me up the other side of that sofa. Yeah, thirty-five pounds. Five. Yeah. Well, I know it's a short distance. That's what we charge. I tell you what. I'd... I reduce it to 20 because I should really charge, as you can see, saloon 35. Oh, he's slitting his own throat, isn't he? <laughs> oh, 35. I know it's a short distance. I should have a... All right, 20. Go on 20 and you t I'll tell you what, you're taking the bread out of my baby's mouth for that kind of money. I'll do it for 20 because it was a short distance. I think I've only got 10 pounds on me. I was told it to be 10 oh, pounds. Goodness. No, no, no. no. I'll do it for 20. It's just a reason I can't do it for less. So it's difficult to do it for us. How much would a black cab be? Well, depending which way you go, how you go, but... Uh... How much would a black cab be, depending which way he went? <laughs> what about, hey, for instance, if he went from there to here? <laughs> well, yeah, that's one argument. <laughs> but if he went via Newcastle, it would be 35 pounds. <laughs> then I went back to the station and I was filming, right? And this is, uh, this is another taxi tower here, uh, allegedly, and these are a couple of coppers. Uh, the police have followed this tout from the Gatwick Express platform. He claims he's simply a passenger waiting for his train. No, I think you're on you to prove that. Mind that, he's armed. Look. <laughs> Ooh, hey. He's got a baguette. He's, that's like a sawn off French breadstick, that is. You because that's, surely they're going to disarm him, throw him down on the floor and disarm him. You've got a ticket on you to prove that you're traveling. I'm in the station. I can use the facilities in the station. No, you can't, Mr. Hadou. Well, I hope they've disarmed him. No, they haven't. Mind out, mind out. Oh, God! Oh, he's coming back. That was, uh, that was one program that I made. I've got another one for you now. Another, uh, this is where I got the police. I spend an awful lot of my time, obviously, out with the police because uh, I'm their mate. And uh, this is I went up to uh, up to the Midlands, I think, around the Leicestershire area, somewhere like that. Uh, and I made a film about these days. And what they've done is they found someone in a car. They be they're pretty sure that the car's stolen and that the whole deal is a little bit ooky. The officers have pulled over an untaxed car. What's your parents? Uh, uh, what's your dad's name? Why that is the first question of his investigation, I don't know. What's your dad's name? <laughs> Terry, you're Nick. No, Paul. Oh, you're all right. Mate. Is it? It's like some kind of trick question. Anyway, there you go. Oh, so you live at this address with then? Uh... He's having a look in the car, see what he can find. Yeah, and the vote is at that address. So... On the voters register. Well, you know. Are you on the voters register? <laughs> uh, no. Right, you're under arrest for not being politically aware. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Let's stay there. Right. Oh, what's he found in the car, look? Yeah, no, Paul. Knock off. Knock on. Off. Yeah. Okay, I'll just make sure that you live at this address then. Who's the old stereo stuff in the boot? She, she took it down to the second-hand shop today with a load of weird things, bits like... Yeah... We were just going back to the house, so, drop her back off, and she was going to sell a wardrobe and that. Mm. Moving out. You want to have a look in your pockets, just in case? Anything? Hey, don't get out, mate. Bloody hell. Oh. Nearly had the door off
for stand sitting... Just want to have a look in your pockets. You don't have to open the door and stand up and let me have a look in your pockets. You know. I mean, he's Nick now. They've got him in the front of the car, one man with him, another one outside keeping guard. He's, he's nicked. That's it. He's on, he's on his way to Chokey. Simple as that. Yeah, hey, mate, because then it's more... Uh, just sit in here, mate. Yeah, so stay it's in the car. Sit in here, in the don't, car. Don't, you're not going to escape, mate. Excuse me. He <laughs> <laughs> had it away. But don't worry. Why are you worrying about? Because that's why the other bloke went outside, so that when he sees him getting out, he'll have a head start on him, run round the back, grab him. Simple as that. You have a look. <laughs> Especially if it's a big, fit-looking man like him. Look. Get him, right, I'll have him. I'll have... Well, uh, <laughs> I'm going to turn the car around. I'm going to turn the car around. I'm going to turn the car around. Why? Because you're too much of a big fat oaf to chase after. No, he's going to turn the car around now. So they'll catch him anyway in the car. Dun, dun, da, 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 dun, dun, da, 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 dun, dun, da, 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 Here he goes, look. Right, go on. Lights on, off you go, have him. Oh, driving fast to make up for the fact that you let him run past it. <laughs> He'll have you gone. He's doing about 60 miles an hour. He had an 18 second lead and he's gone. <laughs> he's completely disappeared. On your blokes were running through. Quiet. Yeah. He's just before that, a bloke was running through the woods. So hang on, who is it? Who is he when he's at home then? <laughs> All right. What's he got? Where is he? But look, he's a member of the Master Craftsman Guild of Grasses. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're running through the woods. Yeah. He stopped checking a 216 Rover on Aston Road, off Rawson Lane. During the check, he made good his escape from the police car after giving Duff details, uh, and that's basically it, huh? He made good his escape, and that's basically it. No, he got out of the car, <laughs> ran away, Gwyn, big thin Gwyn, thought about chasing, and then thought about the old cholesterol level and let him go. <laughs> He's just had a thought as well, though. I can't quite believe the fact, but he thinks he might have just seen a four-year-old boy giving driving lessons, huh? <laughs> What the...? <laughs> if I wasn't chasing a runaway, you'd be in trouble now. <laughs> I hope you can reach the dual control. <laughs> you can't believe it, can you? <laughs> right, what are they doing about it? That's the question. We've got his brief description we've passed out to all the units who've got the gardens here surrounded. Right. So we've just sent a dog unit into the grounds to try and get him out. But we've confined it down to where he's gone and he's... Right. They've got, uh, all, they've got a ring of steel. That's what they've done. They've thrown a cordon around the whole area now. They've got dogs in there. They've probably got choppers. They've probably got choppers. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. But a ring of... A thick, a thick blue line around it. He's going nowhere, basically. My second thing is triangle. He got no chance of getting away from there, look. That's the ring of steel, look. <laughs> As long, I'll tell you what, if he's hiding behind that fence, he's in big trouble. <laughs> Anywhere else, he's home free. It was a particularly difficult uh, investigation, but for, for three reasons, really. Firstly, it was difficult because the, uh, the investigating officer on it, if you listen carefully to the next piece, was actually uh, top comedian and chat show host, Mr. Frank Skinner. The officer on the ground in charge of things was none other than uh, sports pundit Mr. Jimmy Hill. <laughs> and the only uh, material witness, unfortunately, was uh, Larry the Lamb. <laughs> so, just give my fingers crossed to your pants. Here's Frank. <laughs> We don't all saw, uh, on the video call, we'd had people kissing as we were going along, you know. <laughs> Jimmy Hill. <laughs> and material witness, Mrs. Larry the Lamb. Now, 
was sitting in my chair. <laughs> you see, the cracks were by the bottom of the garden. <laughs> Anyway, on, on with the investigation, because they haven't quite exhausted all their resources yet. Following a lead from the WPC, the officers make inquiries at addresses the man might visit. Well, that's nonsense. I mean, the man uh, is a common criminal. What's he, what's he going to be doing on the posh side of town? <laughs> I mean, these are rich for it. They've got outdoor patio furniture. <laughs> And their next door neighbours have got an outdoor swimming pool. <laughs> the inquiries are unsuccessful, so the PCs decide to return to the man's car. They now come up, this is my favourite, they now come up with one of the finest pieces of police detection work it's possible to imagine, all right? The guys abandoned the stolen car. They've got one chance and one chance only. Never mind forensic science. This is what they've come up with. Well, in the car, mate. Okay, mate. That's all right. That's a note, note for the driver of the vehicle when he comes back to it. You'll see that through the window that we've got the keys. All right, let's go. Let's turn 23. <laughs> they've left him a note. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you what I've got here now, changing my voice. I've got another one of these programmes that I made. This is a programme about, we're going to Blackpool now, are you excited? We're going to Blackpool, which is the showbiz capital, not just of the North, not just of England, not just of Britain, but maybe the showbiz capital of the whole of Europe, all right? And uh, it's just to see what's afoot there. Well, the legend show is about uh, the legends, the great legends. Nostalgia is the thing that's in at the moment. And we spent hours and hours trying to think of who would be a big enough legend that's alive, because you can think most of the legends are dead. I mean, Elvis is dead, Roy Orbison is dead, Del Shannon's dead. Uh, so we thought and thought and thought, and we came up with like, three names. One was the Everly Brothers. Uh, the Everly Brothers wouldn't do it. The, the fee was far too high, and they didn't want to do split. So hang on. The Everly Brothers wouldn't do it because the fee was far too high. Uh, they said, I'm sorry, we can't do it because you're offering us too much money. <laughs> oh, no, fair enough. The, the Ebley brothers you've lost, there are, there are other legends. Whoopi fell out. Lucy Springfield was concentrated on recording, and she was only interested in a fortnight, and we wanted somebody for the season. OK, so you haven't got the Ebley brothers. You've come down, I think Dusty would forgive me for saying, you've come down slightly to Dusty Springfield. <clears throat> she won't do it, but there, there must be another legend. And remember, legend is quite a big word. A legend. That you can that you can have, and then we suddenly came across P.J. Proby. <laughs> the Everly Brothers, Dusty Springfield, <laughs> P.J. Proby. Okay, uh, well, I mean, this man is a very very ambitious man, all right? He's got a dream, and he's trying to make that dream come true. My idea of buying this hotel was I wanted a ballroom big enough to put star names on. That's all been my ambition, and that is what I wanted to do. So we're going to try to make this like Caesar's Palace has the Tom Dillon. Ah, oh, now, please, ladies and gentlemen, it's not finished yet. He's trying to make it like Caesar's... Well, they've got a one-armed bandit. <laughs> they've got a chandelier, just like they've got in Caesar's Palace. I believe Caesar's Palace is famous throughout Las Vegas for its red plush armchairs. <laughs> He's trying to build it into the new Caesar's Palace. Uh, and if PJ can get it together, perhaps the Lansdowne uh, will be like the Las Vegas of Caesar's Palace with Tom Jones. We'll always remember that PJ Proby is on the Lansdowne. So... That's what he's done. That's his dream. He wants to turn the lands down and remember that name, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> because I don't think it's too long before you and perhaps uh, your girlfriend are saying, let's do something really romantic. Let's fly off for the weekend and get married in secret at the lands down in Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be new films. Viva Blackpool. All right. <laughs> He wants to make Caesar's Palace has got its Tom Jones. The lands down has got its PJ Proby. <laughs> and I just want to know, did his dream come true? I think it did, because I think I can show you now the Caesar's Palace 
the, the Las Vegas of the North. <laughs> PJ Proby, live at the Lansdowne Blackpool. <laughs> I'm not going to play it. <laughs> uh, I'll start again then, and this time, please, a little bit of respect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Far away. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it would have been a little bit better if you hadn't got Compo Clegg and Foggy as the <laughs> Just think you've lost it slightly with that, but come on. It's so sad. <laughs> so mad. Go ahead, guys. And now, if you've ever seen Tom Jones, if you were ever lucky enough, as I was, by his personal invitation to fly to Vegas and see Elvis, you will know that when the big stars, the big stars, all right, the Bassies, the Wade Newtons, when they make their entrance, they always do the great show business thing of not quite having enough room and having to slip over the stool. <laughs> Anyway, that's fantastic. I've, I've just realised I'm going to have to shoot off because I'm, I've got a big gig I've got to get to tonight. I've got to go up to... Uh, I'm opening for Shirley Bassey at the uh, Corinthian Hotel in Bolton. <laughs> that's really fantastic. Hey, but they get a bit rough up north, but if they start on me, I'm armed, all right? <laughs> See you later. Cheers. Tomorrow night at the same time, there's more brilliant Britcom action with Club Class, so tune in. In a few minutes, Dick Dietrich hosts another nightstand right after Robin. Evil whore. I shall clean the streets of London of your Old kind. Old boss there, sir, I say. Hmm, what's going on here, then? What's your father's name? Fred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, let's see what's in your pockets. <laughs> Way up. Oh! Well, uh, a dagger, some entrails, a dead whore? He thinks of Misty for foot. <laughs> ah. Right, sir. Let's leave him a little note, shall we? <laughs> Here, Mr. Ripper, if you want your dagger and entrails, give me a call. Baker Street, 1212. And when he comes back to finish the dirty deed, and we'll have him. 